Hello, my name is Peter Chalmers, and this is my video on arthroscopic capsulography for multidirectional instability. This was used to form the lateral cubitus position. You can watch my video on bank heart repair to see exactly how to place all these portals, but I have posterior, anterior, superior, anterior, inferior portals, and then a 5 o'clock percutaneous um, placement for anchor insertion. Here's our look inside the joint. You can see how lax the capsule is. I've already placed an anchor here at the 5 o'clock position. Um, one of the things you need to do before passing sutures is come in with a rasp and do um, a little bit of rasping of the capsule. This is to excite the synoviocytes, to encourage them to heal to one another, to make that loose capsule tighten itself down. So we'll grasp one of our sutures here from the anterior inferior cannula, as can be seen here, and then I'll bring in our suture passer from posterior. And this is a case where you really want to get a big bite of capsule. And I, I try and get this to exit as much as possible right where the anchor goes in. I put anchors into the glenoid for this because I want to make sure it's really secure. Other people will just use the labrum as an anchor, and I have seen patients develop labral tears due to that. So we try and avoid that if we can. So we'll create our loop, pass our suture, and then retrograde past that suture back using the, using the uh, suture puller. Grab the other one from that same posterior portal. Um, and then I usually just tie simples. I think you can tie mattresses if you want, but the benefit um, of a simple is that it creates a very tight wrap around the labrum and the capsule, and it also creates a nice bumper of tissue. Um, and so you'll see that here, that as I bring this up, it creates this beautiful bumper of tissue that helps to stabilize the shoulder. I also use all double-loaded anchors here, and I think the benefits there is you get more points of fixation in the capsule more tightening of the capsule for fewer numbers of anchors. So that's a real benefit in a procedure like this where the whole idea is to get more fixation in the capsule, more tightening of the capsule. This just shows tying. Once those knots are all tied, then um, we'll cut those here. Um, and um, once those are cut, we're gonna be ready to um, pass our next suture. And this then becomes very much a rinse and repeat process. But as we go, I'm going to try and get more and more plication. So you see now the capsule is brought over. It's a little bit easier to get even a little bit more out of the next bite. So this is another benefit of a double-loaded anchor is that as you go, you can kind of with each anchor get more and more capsular advancement to try and get the shoulder to be tight enough that it will be stable, which can be really a challenge in these multidirectional instability kinds of patients. So we're ready to drill our next anchor. And I try and place these kind of at a minimum of four on the on the front face or three on the front face um, at or below the level of the bare spot. Um, I use all suture anchors, but you could certainly use um, peak anchors or metal anchors. The, any of those would be acceptable. I think the benefit in all suture anchors is that it's soft. There's no way that it can rub or abrade the chondral surfaces. So you see, as we're working here, I'm trying to get all of that inferior low capsule to translate all the way up. Um, and um, that will tighten the shoulder for us. Again, same process here where you want to make sure that only the sutures that you're tying are coming out of the cannula you're tying through. That can really avoid problems with um, the sutures themselves becoming tangled. Um, and I'm using a very specific process here, again, to avoid suture tangling. That's really important. If you use double-loaded anchors, you got to be really careful. It's really easy to get these tied. So you see here, that we do a lot of work here to try and get super big bites um, to make sure that it comes out exactly where it needs to. So once that's all, and if I can't get it to come from the back, then we'll try from the front. Typically, you can get two or three, sometimes four passes from the back before you have to switch to the front. Um, and I think that switching back and forth helps to get you get help you, helps you to get different vectors on the capsule, which I think helps to spread the sutures apart and hopefully get you even more compression of the capsular tissue. It helps to create that nice fold that you can see here in this patient, that nice bumper of tissue you can see right on the edge there of the socket. Here's placement for one more anchor here, and you can see how nice of a bumper we've created so far. And we're going to try and continue that all the way up the face. So uh, same thing here. We're going to bring our spectrum, our suture passer here from the front, pass through the capsule, and translate that tissue up um, on the face and in addition um, get it to pass and um, uh, as we go here typically I will also do a posterior capsular plication this particular patient doesn't have any posterior instability symptoms even though she has capsular laxity as the main problem in her shoulder 
So in this particular patient, we actually only did the front. I've only shown the front, but most critically in these patients, it's almost always the back and the front. So typically for me, this requires a minimum really of five or six anchors. Again, this is a particularly unusual case where we're doing just the front, um, but um, don't think that's the normal for this particular case. Um, so we'll get that all passed. You can see this is our final suture being passed. As we do that, we're gonna wanna try and get ourselves a nice spread of those sutures. So you see me here using a probe to try and get that suture dressed correctly so when the knot comes down, um, we don't end up with a dog ear in the tissue. So as we do that, you can see that spreads spreads the sutures across the tissue, tries to get an even bigger bumper, an even bigger bite. And you can see how that nicely creates a bumper and then also retensions the anterior infraclinic humeral ligament all the way across the front of the socket. And um, this will stabilize the shoulder and lead to a happy patient. Thank you so much.